Hi guys, good afternoon, welcome to the channel. Keep that down shall we, keep it a bit quieter. Yes, it's February 2020 and I've got my MT10 out on the road for the first time in ages. As you can see, it's a fabulous day. Isn't it great to have dry roads, eh? I'm a bit rusty, so I better take my time. Very, very easy to get carried away with this bike. Now, if you've uh, if you've watched this channel for very long, you will know I've uh, owned this bike from new. It's a 2016 standard MT10 and uh, in June it'll be four years old Blimey. can't believe it four yeah. which way should we go here I have no idea where we are go this way Uh, it does like lift the front wheel up even in third. It is an absolute lunatic bike, this is. Now, I suppose you're, uh, you're already guessing if I've had this bike for nearly four years, I must quite like it. And honestly, I do. I love the bike. But it's not without its faults. Well guys as ever I have got absolutely no idea where I am and uh, like an idiot I've not put my Garmin on either so what I shall do is find a suitable area to pull in and I'll run you through just a few of the things I don't like I mean, over the last couple of years I've done full reviews of the bike, there's a uh, two year review there and uh, a three year review just there as well so uh, if you're interested on the, uh, on the overall feel of the bike how it's been over the last few years how I've enjoyed it perhaps check those out and if you're uh, if you're trying to find out some of the things that you think you might not like, hang on in here. Because I'm going to tell you the things I don't like about my bike. Sunday. Well guys, first thing on my list might surprise you a little bit, or it might not, but it's the looks of it. I mean it's striking isn't it, but it ain't, it ain't beautiful is it? It's not stunning looking, I mean it's not even balanced is it with the header tank sticking out one side and uh, the plastic sticking out the other and uh, you know it's one thing it's always slightly niggled me and obviously you have to love the bike that you own and I do love it I love it in you know it's a brutish bike it's a mental bike and I didn't really have it on my radar until after I'd ridden it. I didn't look at that bike and think, I want that bike. I wanted that bike after I'd ridden it. And that's what I'm saying about its looks. It's got lots of uh, cheapish plastic around it. You know, what's, what's these little things about down here? And, you know, if I hadn't got me uh, 
back rack on those the amount of times people smash those fiddly bits of plastic off above the uh, tail light so not in love with the looks of it but I love the overall bike I hope you understand what I'm saying it's a difficult one to mark it down on because it's so subjective isn't it it's a bit boy racerous with the with the wheels for saying I'm a, a 50 plus year old guy but uh, I picked that colour just thought it st stood out and it still does but looks let me know what you think in the comments below do you think it's a good looking bike the second thing I'm not completely in love with is the brake feel the front brake feel don't get me wrong you can pull this thing up quite well but it's only when you compare it to uh, to other bikes I mean I had a uh, 2012 Triumph Speed Triple and that bike had got Brembo's on all round and uh, I could just grab that even with one finger and virtually stand the thing on its nose whereas this you've got to pull on it a bit more I mean don't get me wrong I've got massive hands I can I can stop this bike when I need to but it just doesn't feel as strong as some bikes have owned so it's only a minor thing and when it goes in it's going in for its uh, it's big service this year it's a uh, valve service so when it goes in this year I'm gonna get some different pads and I'm gonna take advice from the uh, from the forums of what pad to go for they're right down to uh, getting close now so uh, to the limit so they'll, they'll definitely need pads in so yes braking could be better isn't horrible the back brakes perfectly perfectly acceptable the next niggle the seat now you're thinking I'm going to say that seat is horribly uncomfortable and for me it's not because I've still got that standard seat on after 23,000 miles it is actually the second seat and it's the only problem I've had with the bike that the seat let water in but that's not my gripe really because they changed it no quibble uh, under warranty uh, when it was less than a year old but my problem is just how it sits look can you see that rocks around and there's all sorts of fixes for it there's, a, there's one about putting one of those carpet grip things just under there when you put your seat on but the problem is is the rubber under the seat that cushions down onto the frame rails just squeezes down over time and uh, it just becomes loose and it's just an annoyance people with newer bikes are more precious about it I suppose worry about it more but it's not great is it you know all the engineering Yamaha put into that engine and they can't get a, a seat to sit on the bike properly so seat it is another gripe I mean this is this has also got the same problem that uh, loads and loads of bikes have got of this sort of style of bike if I hadn't got the tail rack on and certainly if I put a tail tidy on this bike absolutely covers you covers your back in road filth especially this time of the year and I'm lucky I've got a well, fabulous day to be out today but the back end just covers you sort of see, seemingly gone of the days where you've got a mud guard that covers the back wheel you know I know it's a style thing but sometimes you've got to have function as well haven't you and for me all these types of bikes they don't even think about keeping you clean and dry and keeping the mud from flying up your back so that is another gripe but I can't just aim it at, at, at this particular bike you know loads of them loads of the super nakeds are like it you know some of them are sticking the mud guard down here now on the stay aren't they 
I think the MT-09 has got it like that now. The other thing I'll show you, and it's on the dash. <laughs> Can you see it? Can you see it flashing away? Flashing look, empty. See how many miles I've done? 82 miles. And uh, that is this bike's Achilles heel. It's thirsty. I mean, fair enough, I've been giving it some stick. Oh, at least I have this afternoon. And you want to play on it, you know, you go around the country lanes, you first, second, and third all the time, giving it some hammer on the brakes, it will drink it. And uh, it's got a 17 litre tank on it which honestly for a litre bike isn't really enough but it'll empty that 17 litre tank in uh, in 100 miles if you are uh, if you are giving it some so that is for me the number one gripe that actual fuel gauge is next to useless if you're uh, using it as a fuel gauge because you'll fill it up it'll stay at full and it'll stay at full for probably 50, 55 miles, 60 miles even, and it'll still be looking full. And you think, oh, got plenty of range. And then suddenly it'll drop to half. And then suddenly be a quarter. And now it's flashing. So, you know, you don't have, you know, much notice from having a full tank to thinking, well, yeah, I need, I need fuel. I need fuel quick. So, best thing to do is just use the uh, is the reset and fill it up every hundred miles, which I'm going to have to do. So, uh, yeah, and and the other bugbear when you are filling it up and and you try and get as much in as you can, it's got that neck filler in there, which is on lots of Yamahas, and it stops you filling up the last part of the tank. And for me, that last part of the tank, you get another, best part of another litre in the top of that tank once it cuts off, when it starts bubbling up. There, so, that's annoying. If, if it was for me, I'd have that out altogether and just brim it. But there must be, a, must be a health and safety reason why we don't do that. But, again, little annoyances, but there you go. It's little things that kind of just take the edge off what is a fabulous fabulous bike so I better go and get some fuel all this playing around on the lanes on a lovely day like this we said we got half a tank when I set out now it's flashing I ain't been out I don't know half an hour or so so it is a problem range now especially if you look back i mean i take this bike around europe around the picos do a lot of touring on it i, d I love touring on it i've got i've got plenty of stuff uh, luggage it'll go on it and range is the biggest thing you have to plan for so if you're looking for an mt10 something to think about other than that this thing has been fantastic really reliable so anyway guys I hope my few little gripes don't put you off what is a fantastic bike. I've got no plans to change this. I'm going to hang on to it longer. If you've not ridden one, get yourself a test ride. It will blow your mind. And as far as these go price-wise, there's some good prices on these. You know, you haven't got to pay uh, uh, big money to have a really, really fun, powerful bike so I do recommend them but like all bikes they're not perfect but anyway thanks again for watching the channel and uh, if this is your first time to the channel really appreciate you coming along if you'd like to give me a, a like and perhaps a subscription have a look through what I've done we've got quite a big back catalogue so uh, have a look through and uh, I'll catch up with you on the next one cheerio
Right, all that is 16 and a half litre. Got just under half a litre left. Not a four. Half a litre, how far would that get me? Five miles? 